Hey Bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are going to take a look at how to read the labels on cosmetics, soaps, conditioners, whatever that you're considering buying. This is something that I think we all sort of know how to do at the grocery store for food, so I wanted to take a look at how things sort of change in the world of cosmetics. This is a really useful skill. If you like making your own stuff, if you like recreating products, this is a great great skill to have you, it's, it's essential really, because you need to be able to break down what is in the store-bought product, figure out how much they're using, and then use that information to sort of extrapolate out and create your own version of the product. But even if you aren't into making your own skincare products, this is a very valuable skill to have. If you have ever bought a lotion that said, you know, shea butter lotion in really big letters on the front in the big fancy typography, I'm willing to bet you that if you flipped it over, you would find out that there's probably like maybe 1% shea butter in that lotion. So it's a really good idea to be able to figure out just how much of that ingredient that they're charging the big bucks for is actually in that product. So yeah, we're gonna take a quick look today at INCI and the 1% line, and there'll be more videos on this because there's a lot to talk about. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pick your product up, you're gonna turn it over and look for that ingredients list. If there isn't an ingredient list on something, that's not good. Uh, I know Health Canada absolutely 100% regulates that if you are selling stuff to the public, you have to have a properly formatted ingredients list on that. So if you are at a farmer's market or something and you pick up a product and it doesn't have the ingredients listed on it and that's the product for sale, walk away. That person, that vendor does not know the safety regulations, including ingredients on a product is one of the most bare bones things that a company or a manufacturer or a tiny home crafter has to do to sell their products to the public. So if they are not listing their ingredients, don't buy their stuff. When you do find your ingredients list, there's a pretty good chance that a lot of it won't make a lot of sense. And that is because unlike food, ingredients on cosmetics must be listed in INCI format. INCI or INCI as it's sometimes called is a acronym for International Nomenclature of Cosmetics Ingredients. And it is a standardized internationally used system for naming ingredients. They're based around the Latin names. So beeswax is Syrah Alba, not terribly obvious. Cocoa butter is Theobroma cacao, which makes a little bit more sense. Um, there's different names for absolutely everything that you could put in your products. Something like glycerin is just glycerin, but most of the plant-based ones do have longer, fancier, not entirely obviously relevant names. So Google it. There's tons and tons of databases for these things everywhere on the internet. So if you don't know what something is, Google it. If a brand has been sort of nice or if they have extra space on their label, they'll sort of do things like Sarah Alba and then in parentheses beeswax to kind of fill you in. So their label is a little bit more legible, but legally they don't have to. So if you just see a bunch of Latin, start Googling. Once you know what all of those Latin things on the back of that bottle are, it's time to try to start to figure out how much of each of those things is in your product that you are holding. So. Just like food, they are listed in descending order of inclusion. So if water is the first ingredient, that means there's more water in there than there is anything else. Now that could mean this product is 90% water and then 1% all of the rest ingredients, but it could also mean that the product is 30% water and then the next most prominent ingredient is at 29%. So those two things could actually be very close. And if the first ingredient is water at 30% and the next ingredient is an oil at 29% and then an oil at another oil at like 28%, there's clearly a lot more oil in that product than there is water. But those things would be labeled in the same way with water first and the two oils second. So that's where checking out the consistency of the product starts to tell us more about how it works. But we'll talk about that in another video because there is way too much to cover in just one video. One of the best ways to figure out how much there is of any sort of one ingredient in an ingredients list is to try to find what we call the 1% line. The 1% line is kind of a magic line because labeling regulations say that if an ingredient is used at 1% or less, you can list that at any order. So after 1%, Anything listed after that 1% line, the order is totally made up or can be. I mean, it could, you know, if they want to continue to list it in descending order, good for them, but you'll never know because they certainly don't have to. So you wanna figure out where that 
1% line is because everything after it can be a bit of a lie. You could have your fancy, fancy ingredient that you think you're paying a bunch of extra money for, like the shea butter, you know, right up there, right at the start of the 1% line, but it could actually belong at the very, very bottom if we were keeping up with that uh, in order of percentage thing. So that's, yeah, we look for the 1% line. The best way to look for the 1% line is to look for ingredients that are sort of little markers or flags in an ingredient list. Ingredients that you typically wouldn't use at more than one, two or 3%. And then you can start to say, okay, from this ingredient on, everything else is less than that, that one, that two, that 3%. And that starts to give you a little signpost in your ingredient list. So today we're going to be looking at a lush product. Here's the ingredient list. So you can see water, orange flower water, almond oil, glycerin, cocoa butter, stearic acid, triethanolamine, fragrance, and then patchouli essential oil, sweet orange, lavender, pine, lemongrass, elimi, cetyryl alcohol, benzoin, cinnamon, citral, adrenal, citrinolol, lemonine, linalool, methylparaben, and polyparaben. So it's a pretty long ingredient list, right? Where's that 1% line? Water. Okay, we could use water at 100%. This could totally be like a 90% lotion. That would be fine. Orange flower water, basically also still water, water that just smells nicer than water. Um, so we know that this is a predominantly going to be a fairly like, water-based product. Almond oil, you can totally use almond oil at very high concentrations as well. You can apply that straight to your skin and that's totally fine and normal. So, okay. So nowhere close to 1% line at this point. Then we hit glycerin. So this is a lotion and in glycerin, you typically wouldn't use more than maybe 4% glycerin because it's really sticky. It's a great humectant, but I have definitely tried using it in higher amounts and I basically just made like body glue. You sort of like put it on your hands and you put your hand on your thigh and then like, <laughs> so yeah, we start to kind of see we're probably somewhere in like a two to 4% range here with the glycerin. So take a look at that cocoa butter and you know there's really not a lot of cocoa butter in there. Stearic acid, you'd probably use stearic acid, again, kind of in that two to 4% range because it's just a thickener and it's quite a strong one. So you could use more of it for sure and you definitely would use more of it in some applications, but I wouldn't in a lotion, I would probably stick to about 2%. So now we're starting to think, okay, starting to narrow down on the 1% line. So that next ingredient, triethanolamine is both a pH adjuster and an emulsifier. It has a very high pH. It has a pH equivalent to that of like an 18% sodium hydroxide solution. So the maximum recommended usage for this is typically about 5%. As noted with the glycerin and the stearic acid there, I highly doubt there is 5% of triethanolamine <laughs> in this lotion. Okay, so we're starting to narrow this down. And then fragrance. Fragrance starts to be a pretty good giveaway because you typically wouldn't use fragrance at more than about 1%, maybe 2% if you wanted something to be highly fragrant. But take a look at this ingredient list. There's a ton of essential oils after the fragrance. So I'm betting if we haven't crossed the 1% line already, it's here. Like the fragrance is like 1% and then everything underneath there is going to be less. We can also start to sort of assume that because essential oils are fairly expensive. So most brands will use the bare minimum to get the effect that they're going for. And there's also a bunch of different ones in here. And so if each one of these was used at more than 1%, we would end up having a huge portion of the recipe comprised of essential oils, which is generally what, you know, not what anybody wants. It would be a very, very smelly product. It would be a very expensive product and it could potentially be a very irritating product. So we have found our 1% line. So take a look at all of those things. In that list somewhere, you might find often past this point, something that you thought you were paying, you know, you, th you thought you were getting a bunch of because it was in really big print on the label. You're not. Also, Keep in mind that the ingredients at this point in time are totally, like the order means basically nothing, right? So there could very well be, you see those parabens at the end of the list? Those are at the end of the list, not because they use less parabens than they used anything else, but because parabens are scary and most people want to think that there's not a lot of parabens in there. I mean, who knows? We have no idea exactly how much they've used of either of those ingredients compared to all of those essential oils. 
but it could be more, right? Like those parabens, if this was a decreasing list, could exist directly after the fragrance. We just don't know. So that is a thing you wanna keep in mind when you are reading your ingredients list, is find your 1% line. When it comes to finding the 1% line, there are quite a few different ingredients to look for. And honestly, those ingredients vary quite a lot with the type of product that you're looking at. Glycerin is a great sort of indicator of sort of like a 2%-ish line in a lotion, but in some products you honestly might have it at like 80 or 90% for a tincture or something. So that is something to keep in mind. Same with stearic acid. If you're using it as a thickener in a lotion, it's probably around 2%, but if you're looking at something that is solid and hard, it's probably being used at a much higher rate, like even up to 20%. Preservatives are always a good one to know that you're looking at a pretty low number because check the individual preservative. You can look up if it is a sort of sold to home crafters preservative. You can just look it up. Just go to a supplier that sells it and check the maximum recommended usage rate. I know for Liquid Dermal Plus, it is like 0.1 to 0.5%. So you know when you run into Liquid Dermal Plus on a ingredient list, everything, like you know you're in that under 1% line because it tops out at half a percent. So that is a really great one. Fragrances are usually never more than one to 2%, but again, this varies. If something like Tiger Balm uses a ton of essential oils to really get that, like that fiery sensation that Tiger Balm is known for. So that's honestly a lot closer to like 50% essential oil. So it really, really helps to know your products. But fragrances, preservatives, and antioxidants are three big ones to look for. Vitamin E is rarely advisably used at higher than half a percent. So also, you know, if you're hitting tocopherol, you're in that, you're like, you're past that 1% line. So things to keep in mind, definitely some research to be done, but keep that 1% line in mind. If you are holding a product that is singing the prices of argan oil and it's a lotion and the argan oil comes after the glycerin, comes after the fragrance, chances are there's very little argan oil in there and I would probably look at another product if the pricing of that product is based on the inclusion of argan oil at like, what, maybe 2%? So just some things to think about. All right, so thanks so much for watching. I hope you learn something. I hope you become that person. I am that person who goes to people's homes and sort of just like casually reads the back of all the products that they have, or you're just like forever in Shoppers Drug Mart or Sephora being like, hmm, hmm, I wonder, yes. It's an interesting hobby and uh, honestly a fairly terrible party trick, but mm, one I enjoy. I am planning on making this a bit of a series where we will talk about different ways to figure out what ingredients do what and how much of them is in something and you know should you duplicate something can you include that ingredient if you're home crafting something so if you have any questions that you would like to see addressed in that sort of like broad realm of things that we can chat about let me know in the comments below and i will try my best to work those into future videos so thank you so much for watching please subscribe uh, the thumbs up thing is good i have been told uh, and yeah, I will see you next time.